What's going on guys and welcome to Who to Sign For. Now in this collection of videos I'm going to be giving you my recommendations on what players to sign for a specific team in career mode. Now before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see aren't designed to be realistic and that the player ratings and potentials of the players may vary depending on what database you're using and how those players perform for you during the season. You don't have to follow all the tips I'll be giving but this is really just a set of guidelines for those of you out there that need a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players to bring into a certain club. This is mainly aimed at those of you out there who may be new to the game and just need a little bit of advice or for those of you out there who just want a few recommendations if you're stuck for player suggestions. First team we're going to use for this series is Arsenal. Arsenal I think a lot of people will do a career mode with this year. They've got a very very good squad as you can see right now but the one thing about Arsenal that you'll see whilst I'm going through the players is that quite a few players in the squad are in their 30s and even though there's a lot of youth in the squad which is of course a real philosophy for Arsenal, there are some players out there who quite frankly won't make the grades. So with Arsenal, our aims really are to improve the first 11, but also bring in some more young potential players as well, even though there are quite a few players here already. Regardless, as you can see with the Arsenal squad, it's very, very good. You know, some very decent players out there. The first 11 squad you'll come in for in this database looks a bit like this as things stand. The one thing you'll notice though of Arsenal is that they could probably do with a new striker. Now, of course, you can play Sanchez up top. Giroud's not a bad option either. Uh, Walcott can play as a striker as well. But I think signing a striker like with Arsenal is probably going to be your number one target. Now, obviously with the budget, there's £50.5 million to start off with in this database. I didn't use the 60% increase that I would have got because some of you out there won't get it or play any of the preseason tournaments because some of you out there won't want to play them. So with £50.5 million, I think signing a new striker should be your main target with Arsenal. And my number one recommendation for a player to sign with the Gunners is this guy, Alexandre Lacazette of Lyon, the French striker who is 24 years old and already 84 overall. Now he's valued at £28 million, uh, although the chief executive said he should be worth about 35.3 to £41.6 million. I would advise going straight in with a £35 million bid. You're probably not going to get him for his valuation. You'll most likely have to spend a bit over the odds, but £35 million is still a very fair deal for a player who's only 24 years old and is already 84 overall and will definitely get better in the future. Lacazette's potential is 88 and in the first season if he does well for you he could probably reach 86, 87 and if you give him some training probably even exceed that. As you can see uh, Leon did reject the first bid. We went in back with a £40 million bid for Lacazette and this time they say yes. So after a £5 million increase from the initial bid Leon are fine letting us take Lacazette for £40 million. Now that is £12 million over his valuation with the contract as well even though he wants a wage increase, you don't always have to give the player the wage increase. I always recommend, that if unless you're desperate for a player um, and you're only a final negotiation with him, just go in with his first initial contract, the one he's currently on at his club, and don't give him a wage increase. As you can see, we don't give him a wage increase, but Lacazette still accepts the contract and he does become our first signing. So he's £12 million over his valuation of £40 million, but as you'll see his stats in just a moment's time, I'm pretty sure he'll be worth every single penny of those £40 million. If you give him the game time, put him straight in the first 11, he's good enough to to be your headline striker at 84 overall and take Olivier Giroud's place, he will get you about 20 goals a season in the Premier League and that could be the difference between you winning the Premier League or finishing in second, third or fourth. So Lacazette for me would be my big signing, the main signing I would make if I was managing Arsenal and that's who I would recommend you sign as well. There are also other players out there as well that could be just as good but I think Lacazette would be the ideal target for Arsenal, 24 years old, potential to get even better and already good enough for the first team as well. Once you've signed him, depending on what fee you've paid, for us it was £40 million, you should be able to still have a little bit of money left over in your transfer budget to make a couple more signings as well. Now when it comes down to players leaving the club, one player I'd recommend shifting on is Nacho Monreal. Now I know he played pretty well for Arsenal last season, he's 80 overall and a 29 year old left back. He's not bad whatsoever but with Monreal you could probably get a younger left back to come in and develop for the future. Kieran Gibbs is already just as good as Nacho Monreal and a few years younger as well. So personally speaking if you can sell Monreal for a little bit over his value Valuation. As you can see, we end up selling him to Everton for nine million, uh, sorry, nine and a half million pounds, which I think is a totally fair deal for a 29-year-old left back valued at 80, uh, sorry, uh, overall of 80 and valued at 7.5 million pounds. If you can sell on Nacho Monreal, you could probably go ahead and buy a younger left back who's very similar in the overall, maybe a little bit uh, worse off than Monreal right now, but has the potential to get far better. Jethro Williams would be my number one choice to come in for Arsenal if you were going to sell Nacho Monreal and look to bring in a replacement 
replacement left back. Williams may be 78 overall right now, and that's two overalls lower than what Mon uh, Monreal currently is, but he has the potential to reach 86. Monreal won't get any better unless you're training him specifically, whereas Williams can get up to an 86 overall, and of course with training, possibly uh, exceed that as well. So Jethro Williams, you could sign him for around the same amount of fee as you sell on Nacho Monreal for. As you can see, he goes to Everton for £9.5 million. You get allocated £8 million pounds if you're playing on the lenient setting for board settings. And uh, Jethro Williams, you can see, uh, PSV accepts a £7.5 million pound bid for the left-back initially. So Williams will come in for around £7.5 million. Pounds. You may have to spend a little bit more depending on, you know, basically just how lucky you are, I suppose, with your initial bid. But I recommend a valuation bid for Williams straight away. You might get lucky like we did and then accept it straight off the bat. And when that happens, you can offer him a contract. He'll come in. You'll probably get him on lower wages than what Monreal is anyway. And even though the, the left-back you'll sign to replace Monreal is two ratings lower, he'll grow in the season. He'll probably grow those couple of ratings in the first season anyway. And of course, with a potential of 86, you know, and exceeding that with training in good form as well, this guy's the perfect understudy for Kieran Gibbs, who would now be your first choice left back. So you have a great young left back for the future, as well as Gibbs, who would already be as good as Monreal when you sell him at 80 overall. This is probably, you know, a really good tip for Arsenal, you know, to sell on one of those players. You can sell on Gibbs if you'd prefer to uh, keep Monreal, but I'd prefer to keep Gibbs because he has potential to get a little bit better than he is right now, whereas Monreal has no potential. Sell on Monreal, bring in a younger left back who has the potential for the future and uh, make sure you have him as a good understudy for Gibbs. Give him some training as well and you could see him match the 80 overall that Monreal was when you sold him in the first season anyway with the potential to far exceed that too. So with Williams, you can see we were offering a couple of contracts here. Sadly, we couldn't get him lower than 60 grand a week, which is still fine. That's still 10 grand a week, less than what Monreal was on regardless. But yeah, Williams would be my second signing recommendation for Arsenal once you've brought in that first choice striker. He would be a really, really good backup left back for Kieran Gibbs. A good understudy, if you will. Someone to play in the cup games, the midweek games as well. I would definitely recommend Jethro Williams. And for £7.5 million, pounds, that's lower than what we sold Monreal for. We're thinking about the future here with Arsenal. He would be a really, really good choice. And you can see his stats right now. If you were to get rid of Kieran Gibbs as well, he'd go into the first team right now. So he's he's good enough for it, even if he is lower than what Monreal was. Uh, still following that, as you can see, there were transfers also coming in for some of our players as well. One player I would recommend sh uh, shifting on to for Arsenal is Thomas Rosicki. Now, I know you're probably out there sitting, sitting there thinking, no, not Rosicki. You know, he's been at Arsenal since 2006. But Rosicki is in his final year of his contract. He's 30 year, uh, 34 years old, 80 overall. The fact of the matter is you're probably not going to renew Thomas Rosicki's contract at the end of the year. So he'd be leaving the club at the end of the season anyway. And plus, because Arsenal's central midfield area is pretty strong right now, he probably won't get too much game time. So if I were you, I would cash in on Thomas Rosicki right now instead of letting him go for free come the end of the year. As you can see, we negotiate a £5.5 million deal with Inter Milan. That's totally fine for me. And I think that'll be totally fine for you as well. I know rosicki has been there since 2006. It'll be a shame to sell him, but he's probably not going to play too much. He's probably going to go for free at the end of the season. If I were you, I'd cash in on him right now. And I would look for a replacement for Rosicki's position as well. Even though the central midfield area for Arsenal is pretty good, I would still look for a player to come in and replace Rosicki. My number one choice would be Ross Barkley from Everton. The reason is quite simple. Barkley is English, which is good if you are playing uh, the career mode and you want to sign some players from the same nation as the club, like I do, for example, in my career mode. Barkley is a really good young player, 21 years old, already 79 overall, so just one rating lower than Rosicki. And at 21 years, Years old, he has the potential to reach 87 overall. If you give him some game time and you focus on him with the player uh, player training as well, you could definitely see him matching that and getting even better. He could be your first choice attacking midfielder for years to come if you're not too keen on Mesut Ozil and the other players available. Still, I'd also recommend selling Ospina, the Colombian goalkeeper. Now, you're probably also sitting out there, sitting there thinking, why would you sell Ospina? 78 overall, 26 years old. He does have the potential to grow a couple more ratings as well. Well, the reason being is quite simple. We're negotiating a, a deal here for Ross Barkley. As you can see, we end up uh, getting a £17 million bid accepted after this one was uh, rejected, which I think is totally fine for a player who has the potential to reach 87. The reason I would recommend selling Ospina is because with Arsenal, you have a player out on loan at Roma right now called Chesney, your young goalkeeper. Well, he's not young anymore, but uh, the youngish goalkeeper who's 25 years old. And um, he's on loan at Roma right now. If you sell Ospina, as you can see we do right here, for £6.5 million, you can go ahead and recall Chesney, which we'll do in just a moment's time, for £770,000. They have the exact same potential, uh, 81, and of course, you know, you're basically making a few million pounds just by selling on a player who you may not give too much game, to, uh, game time to this year anyway because of Petr Cech's arrival in real life. You recall Chesney for seven hundred and seventy grand, and you know, basically there, you just made a few million pounds on selling on a player and
and bring him back one that was out on loan. So I think that's a really good idea right there. Chesney will come back as a backup goalkeeper. He won't be too disappointed to play in that role either. And of course, with him being one rating higher than Ospina was anyway, I think that's just a really simple tip right there because at the end of the day, you know, Chesney is not going to grow loads and loads of loads of ratings whilst he's out on loan at Roma. He's got six ratings to catch up to Petr Cech starting overall anyway, 85. I think that's just a really simple way of getting a few million pounds for a goalkeeper who you can replace with a goalkeeper that's already out on loan that's even better right now. Still, Barkley for £17 million pounds is the defeat we negotiated for the attacking midfielder. I would recommend Ross Barkley if you were managing Arsenal, but of course there are other targets out there as well, which I think I just said. But either way, Barkley would be my recommendation as a player that has the potential to reach 87 plus with good form and player training as well. I think Barkley would be a great choice for Arsenal too. And uh, also possibly selling on Mikel Arteta. Now he knows club captain for Arsenal, but he's also in the final year of his contract. He's 33 years old, 81 overall. He's possibly going to decrease in the first season. If you can just get a few million pounds for him, just like we do with Thomas Rosicki, get him out of the club, get him off the wage bill and look to sign him some younger players as well. Uh, Arteta, of course, not a bad player. I do know that 81 overall, but of course with Arsenal, like I said, you want to try and get rid of these players and try and sign players for the future as well. And of course, you've already got players that can do that role like Francois Coquelin in the side, who of course is a key member of the squad right now in real life too. I think that if you sell on Arteta, give more game time to younger players, you'll see those players far surpass the 81 overall that Arteta is right now. I think getting them out of the club is probably a good idea, even if he is club captain and not a bad starting overall because he probably will decrease and you probably won't renew his contract anyway. So uh, there you go. Still, as for signings to be made with the remaining budget, I looked at Riedewald of Ajax, who I've actually signed in my career mode on YouTube right now for Watford and uh, also Porto's Ruben Neves as well. Both of these players, uh, we offered £5 million for both of these players for both Porto and Ajax and they both accepted those deals. Now, as you can see right now, we don't have an overall on them because sadly I forgot to scout them whilst I still had the chance, but both of their potentials are 86. Now, Riedewald is a centre-back that can also play holding mid and left back as well. Ruben Neves, a holding midfielder by trade. I think both of these players would be really, really good signs to come in. Arsenal's centre-back area isn't too bad because Shelny and Mertesacker are the usual first-choice pairing. Uh, right now in a game and Gabriel of course would be a really good young player for the future but you wouldn't mind signing another player for cover as well. Riedewald would be a really really good signing at 75 overall which is what he is at just 18 years old very very decent signing to hit 86, uh, 86 potential in the future as well he's a great long term replacement for Murtasaka and Koscielny and of course Ruben Neves 74 overall to begin with also has a potential of 86 really good long term replacement there in the holding midfield area for Arsenal so those are two players I would recommend signing with the remaining budget you may have and uh, you know you can get them for £5 million pounds is what I paid you might be able to get them a little bit cheaper if you want to go in with uh, low ball offers right from the beginning I just put £5 million pounds in so I'm totally fine paying that for those two players and those two players like I said can hit 86 overall and with enough game time and player training as well they could exceed that potential so those two players are the final ones I would choose so once the summer transfer window is over and you sign those five players they may be expensive players don't get me wrong they may be an expensive uh, uh, five uh, players for you at £75 million pounds or around that depending on what fees you're paying but either way all of these players right here the the oldest player at 24 years old for Lacazette they've all got potential for the future not a single player has a lower potential than 86 they are all fantastic players for the future for the long-term future of Arsenal you're building for that you've got great players there all of them could get some game time in the first season Lacazette of course would be your main striker Willems you could possibly play ahead of Kieran Gibbs if you wanted to but Gibbs would probably be my first choice left back to begin with you got Barkley in there as well that's 79 overall to begin with 87 potential like I said you're building for the future you got some good players there for the potential and of course they wouldn't be too far off getting into the first team right now even though Lacazette would probably be the only one that does go straight into the first team out of those five choices but with Arsenal because of the squad you had anyway you don't really need to go all guns blazing anyway you don't really need to sign all of the best players in the world because you've already got great potential players there and already a really decent squad and so for the 50 million pounds you start off with if you make the smart signings you sell on a few deadwood players as well reduce used to wage bill too. You could probably get these players for even cheaper if you really did want to negotiate and spend your time doing that. But those are my five signings I would recommend for an Arsenal career mode. I think those five players would do really well, not just in the first couple of seasons, but also in the future as well. So I decided to simulate to the end of the season and see how Arsenal actually got on. And as you can see, they actually won the league title with 87 points, only lost once in the entire season, which is really, really good. So with those signings, they must have helped Arsenal get to that. Lacazette got 20 goals in his first season, as you'll see in just a moment 
time as well. And in the FA Cup, they also uh, finished in the final of that competition, won the Community Shield and won the Capital One Cup final. So a treble for Arsenal. I forgot to put them in Europe, so sorry about that. I'll make sure for the next one of these episodes I'll do, I will put the team in Europe if they've uh, already qualified for Europe in real life. But to win the Capital One Cup, to win the Premier League, that's two great major honours there. The Community Shield too, and of course FA Cup runners-up. That's not bad at all for a first season with Arsenal. And those five players right there, I think, would do really well. Now, as you look through the squad report come the end of the season, you can see Petr Cech grew four ratings. So it seems like goalkeepers still can grow quite a few ratings when they're in their 30s in career mode, which is something which some people agree with, some people don't. But as for the five players you signed, as you can see, their finishing overalls for the first season was Reid Avald, 77, Willems, 80, Ruben Neves, 77, Barkley, 82, and Lacazette grew to an 87 in the first season. So all of those players grew by at least two ratings each. And I think all of those players look really, really well set up for the future. As for Lacazette, as you can see, he was the headline signing. He scored 27 goals in all competitions in 49 games. That's pretty impressive for a debut season for Lacazette. And he's already now valued at £40 million. And at 25 years old, he's still got years to grow. He could still get even better. He could hit 90 plus with the right form, the right potential and the right player, uh, the right uh, player training, I should say, and the right management too. So those are the five recommendations I would make for signing for an Arsenal career mode. Now, again, you don't have to make all these signings. This is really just tips and you know ideas, recommendations, if you will. Don't have to follow these suggestions if you don't want to. But those are the five players I would sign if I were you. And this is how I would set myself up for the first season with an Arsenal career mode, if that's what you're planning to do this year in FIBA 16. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please do leave a like. Let me know in the comments who you would sign for an Arsenal career mode and who you want me to do next in this series. Thank you for watching the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Please leave a like if you did. And I'll see you for the next episode of this mini-series very soon.